plant-based omega-3s in adequate amounts and we'll, we'll be good. Um, stay, there's no such thing as fish oils. Any oil found in the fish actually came from algae. Um, and um, if it's in fish, it's no good because the fish is dead. Um, and um, you shouldn't be eating, eating dead fish. So please, um, the studies on so-called fish oils show that they are not effective for preventing heart disease. And um, I, would t I tell people, fish oil is about as good for you as it is for that fish it came from. It's no good. Um, Statins um, are most useful for people who have, um, in my opinion, um, um, inborn errors of lipid metabolism that cause them to have massively elevated um, uh, cholesterol values that predispose them to early heart disease and have a documented family history of early heart disease. Um, and provided you can find a statin that they can tolerate without causing uh, muscle and liver damage. Um, um, and or if they are unwilling to make the dietary changes to bring their cholesterol levels within range uh, to prevent uh, development of heart disease. But the best way to prevent heart disease is to change your diet to bring their cholesterol values down, my opinion. So the question was on alcohol, coconut oil, oh, oil oh, yeah. statins. Anyone want to comment uh, on Coconut those? oil is a heavily saturated fat. I would say used with, with uh, caution, if at all. And alcohol is a toxin. Um, and uh, any amount will um, uh, kill uh, brain and liver cells and, um, um, and raise your risk for um, cancer. Um, so does that mean never do it? Um, I can't say that because, you know, if you, it, 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 it's a risk benefit ratio. If you want to go out occasionally and have, you know, a drink or two with friends, that's, you know, that's up, you know, that's the person has to weigh that risk, but you have to be really, really conscious of the risk and decide, yeah, you know, um, this is the, 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 the relative risk of a couple of drinks, you know, once a month, once or twice a month is relatively low. I think I'm okay. But if you're having a couple of drinks every single day, or if you're having more than a couple of drinks every single day, that, that gets to be a significant risk. Um, and um, I think you really need to think that, rethink that. Um, if, if for, um, for a woman, if you're having more than you know, one or two drinks a day, for a guy, if you're having more than uh, two to four drinks a day, you are really raising your um, uh, risk for developing uh, and women, uh, it's breast cancer. In men, it's uh, 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 throat, uh, throat and uh, bladder cancer, I believe, are the, the top uh, uh, cancers. Uh, head and neck cancers in men, excuse me. Um, anyone else want to comment on alcohol, coconut oil, fish oil, or statins? Yeah, um, you're, you're muted. Dr. Lohm, you're muted. I see your lips moving, but you're muted. So I'll, if you don't mind, I'll just say what I'm thinking. A very wise doctor once told me, whenever there's a question, whenever there's a problem, look to nature. And do you see any statins on trees or coconut <laughs> oil on trees? Or I mean, out, grapes could ferment and become alcohol, but do you see any wine anywhere in nature? And what, what was the fourth one? Um, coconut oil and fish oil. Well, fish oil. Yeah. I, so, so, you know, again, our lives being improved by these items. I don't know, you know, everything in life is a cost benefit analysis and people have to decide for themselves. I think coconut oil is a terrific makeup remover. I think it's fantastic for a moisturizer, but I wouldn't put it in my body. And, you know, this is somebody who went to raw vegan culinary school where this was like, that's what we were doing is making desserts out of coconut oil and agave. And they were saying this was healthy. I remember, I can't remember which documentary now, but it was um, the doctor in Las Vegas, Dr. Evan Allen of talking about the miracle coconut oil. He says the miracle is that anybody believes 
it's good for you. I mean, Dr. John McDougall has been saying for years that coconuts come in hard shells for a reason. And as a culinary school graduate, I cannot tell you how hard it is to open a coconut, even when you've been trained and have the right tools. So to, for these people that are paleo and keto to think that, you know, this is our natural food, who, first of all, coconuts don't grow everywhere. And even when they do, have you ever tried to open one? I mean, seriously. So I think coconut oil is one of the most ridiculous scams in the world. And it drives me crazy that anyone would think it's a healthy, they go, oh, but it's antimicrobial. Well, you know, alcohol is too. So let's just all bathe in it. I mean, it, it, there's just such, I mean, it, it drives me crazy about coconut oil. Um, fish oil, you know, my, I, I'm, I can't speak to deficiencies in that area, but I will say that whatever there is a deficiency for, there's a solution in the plant-based world. So if somebody felt that they really needed something that was in fish or fish oil, I know that there's got to be a plant-based source that's as good, if not superior. Um, statins, I can't address. I'm not a doctor, but my feeling is, is whatever you do, avoid doctors and medications. If you can use food as medicine. And alcohol, you know, I mean, you know, another so saying by Dr. John McDougall is people want good news about their their bad habits. And people say, oh, red wine's good for you. It's got, you know, we have a cardiologist here that could say it's a reverse control or whatever it's called. But guess what? Whatever is good for you in the olive oil came from the olive. Whatever's good for you in the alcohol came from the grape. You know, the new research now from Oxford University saying that um, it, any amount, even moderate drinking compromises brain health. And, is, and now think the Shirzai's are coming out saying that it's terrible for your brain. And, and if, unless you wanna get Alzheimer's. So, I mean, before we knew about the link with alcohol and cancer and breast cancer, I remember hearing a lecture by Dr. Tom Campbell saying alcohol creates cancer in every part of the body it touches. If people wanna drink, they can drink. You know, this isn't a court ordered program, but it really depends what your goals are. And if it's optimal health, and especially if it's weight loss, I don't see how adding coconut oil and alcohol to an already superior diet is really going to help you reach those goals. Uh, one thing I did forget to say, and I'm sorry, but about the salt, there is a new product now called green salt, and it's made out of a sea asparagus, and it is salt, but it's 50% less sodium, and it's absolutely delicious. So for people that really want salt, that's what I'm recommending now. Awesome. Yeah, what I would say is I agree with everything that everybody said so far. With alcohol, there's no safe amount, even the smallest amount increases cancer risk, can raise blood. Everybody's a little different about how it affects their blood pressure. Um, the American Heart Association guidelines for the longest time have said, you know, one for a, a, a woman, two for a man, don't exceed that per day uh, with, with drinks. And yeah, sure. So alcohol might not cause the clogging of arteries, the atherosclerotic process to a to a large degree, like like animal based foods or, or tobacco can, but it can do other things more indirectly in the long term that affects heart health, <clears throat> raise blood pressure, make you gain weight from the calories and, and cause other metabolic disturbances. There's a lot of individual variability about, you know, how much people can tolerate in regards to alcohol for heart disease, but for cancer, any amount will increase cancer risk. Should you never drink alcohol? Well, you know, it's, it's the analogy I, I think of uh, when you talk about the risk benefit ratio with alcohol is like, well, every time you walk out in the sun, you're getting exposed to the sun, the sun can cause skin cancer, right? So does that mean I should never walk out of the sun? Well, no, you need your vitamin D, you know? So it's like, come on, risk benefit. So yeah, I mean, small amounts every once in a while, as long as everything else is healthy and you're eating the proper diet, exercising, your weight's good. Is it gonna be devastating to your health? Probably not. Uh, but, you know, that's also similar to saying, well, if I only smoked one cigarette a month, is that really going to hurt me? Well, probably not, but cigarettes can be very addictive. So can alcohol. So you just got to be careful not to let it, you know, get out of hand. Uh, about coconut oil, every, you know, agree with everybody else, huge saturated fat content in coconut oil. The controlled feeding studies, which I think is really interesting. A lot of people don't go back to way back uh, decades and decades ago. They showed any amount of saturated fat in the diet, any amount above 0% of calories will raise the LDL cholesterol. And LDL is extremely strongly linked with heart disease. So, you know, you want to keep the saturated fat as low as you possibly can. Uh, so, and that includes, that includes coconut oil. Um, and then um, fish oil, everybody's, I think, really done a great job answering that fish oil, it, you know, as Milton said, does not prevent heart disease. And there's no good data. There's been multiple randomized controlled trials trying to show uh, if there's any cardiovascular benefit for fish oil, and they failed to show that. Not only did they fail to show it, but there is a pretty strong uh, <clears throat> finding that 
prostate cancer in men is increased if you take uh, fish oil. And it's not just prostate cancer, it's the aggressive prostate cancer because you know prostate cancer sometimes isn't as aggressive and takes you know years and years, but the aggressive prostate cancer risk could be significantly higher in, in men who take fish oil. And you know, when somebody says to me, oh, but I need to take fish oil or I need to eat fish to get omega-3s, I'm like, no, that's like saying I need to eat a Snickers bar to get peanuts. You don't need to do that. You get all this other baggage that comes with it, right? So when you're thinking about the, the fish oil and the, eating the fish to get the fish oil, I always tell them the baggage, the cholesterol, the saturated fat, the dioxins, the mercury, the, all that other stuff that's coming in there. Fish oil is the biggest snake oil. It doesn't help for heart disease. We never recommend it. It's not in any guideline uh, at all. And then the last is statins, which I guess should be something I speak on because uh, that's <clears throat> my whole realm. And I agree that if you're eating whole food, plant-based, no oil and you know low in fat, um, and your LDL comes down, most people will achieve an LDL cholesterol that's around that 70 range if you're really doing it uh, properly. And that range is, is considered ideal for heart disease prevention. Uh, now, there is a subset of people who eat whole food, plant-based, no oil, and their LDL sits around 90, 100, 110. You're like, oh, what the heck do I do about that? And there's no good scientific answer. They haven't done you know, a trial. Should we give them statins? Should we not? Can we just leave it there because they're protecting their endothelium with a healthy diet so well that, okay, fine. Um, what, uh, and I've asked some of the experts. I've been doing this whole lifestyle medicine thing for about uh, six or seven years. And I remember Caldwell Esselstyn would say, if they're doing everything else perfect, whole food, plant-based, no oil, low fat, pounding the green leafies. He likes to talk about the high nitrate rich foods. If the LDL is a little above 70, don't worry about it. And then other experts, uh, I remember, you know, Neil Barnard has been doing this for decades. He was like, well, you know, if it's only hundred, if your LDL only comes down to hundred when you're eating perfectly, give it time. It's going to slowly creep down over years. You might notice five or 10 years from now, it comes down to 90 and then 80 and then 70. Some people it just takes a little bit longer. So the where statins come into play is the patient who won't change their diet. They won't do it. Yeah, and I agree. The genetic, uh, the genetic components of the people whose LDL cholesterols are three hundred and are not dietary affected, but that's rare. That's rare. You know, don't I have so many people come to me with an LDL of two hundred or an LDL of two fifty. Like, oh, it's genetic. It's genetic. I just need the meds. It's just genetic. Nothing I can do. No, you might be one of those hyper responders, those hypersensitive people to cholesterol and saturated fat. So I tell them you need to do an experiment first. You need to experiment with yourself. Go strict whole food, plant-based, no oil for one month, repeat your lipid profile. And almost always, if they do it, their LDL drops to like less than hundred in like, in, in, in like a month. And then it's like, oh, well, I guess it's not purely genetic, right? It, it, it was dietary. So, but in the people who will not change their diet, the, you know, a lot of the randomized controlled trials are muddled by uh, pharmaceutical industry and all those things. But really there's so much data now that says that it still would be beneficial in those patients to protect the endothelium, to lower the LDL cholesterol low enough. And the, the guidelines from the American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology do say in those instances for heart disease patients, um, they, they do have strong benefit. And other LDL lowering drugs, the Zetias and, and, and such of the world don't have the, the, the good data. So it's not just the LDL lowering. Interestingly, statins were first found in the same fungus that uh, penicillin was discovered in. And the mechanism of statins in the fungus was to act as an antibiotic to kill surrounding bacteria to allow the fungus to thrive. And so a lot of people think, well, the reason statins work is not just a cholesterol thing. They have this other, what they call pleiotrophic effect. Maybe they're acting as an antibacterial, helping to knock out inflammation within the plaque to stabilize it so it doesn't rupture and trigger the, the infarct. So, it, you know, I try so hard to not put patients on statins. I try so hard to get them to make everything, you know, with diet and lifestyle. But there are that select few that if they don't change their diet, their LDL is high, they, they will get a, a benefit of, of reduction. It's only a small percentage though. It's only a small percentage reduction. I make sure that's clear to patients. Something called the number needed to treat. How many patients like that do I need to put on the statin to prevent one event? It's pretty high, it's like 70 or something like that, right? But when you're giving them to 7 million people, fine, you're saving, you know, preventing a lot of events. But on an individual basis, the benefit of the statin is, is still pretty small. And I, I make sure to... A lot of doctors don't educate their patients on that day. Oh, if you don't take this, you're gonna have a heart attack. That's what they'll say. That's not true. You know, it, it's uh, it's a small percentage benefit, but it's there, and it's you know better than nothing. Thank you, Juliana. Do uh, you want to add anything before I turn over to audience questions? The only thing I would add to that is that I love coconut oil as a hair mask. It makes your hair really soft, but I would never eat it. Don't recommend it. <laughs> 
Go ahead. Oh, I just want to add, um, uh, Dr. Loma uh, just created this wonderful meme, snake, uh, um, that fish oil is really snake oil. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chef AJ? Yeah, what I want to say, and especially to the uh, to the doctor and the dietitian here, you know, we say, well, maybe a little bit of alcohol is okay, moderation is okay, but what is moderation? And if we live in a population over 70% are overweight or obese, clearly we have demonstrated that very few people are able to practice any kind of moderation. So to be recommending moderation to a nation full of addicts doesn't make sense to me. Oh, I, let me be clear. I wasn't saying moderation. Well, I, right? I didn't say you, but oh, I'm just, oh, okay. oh. I, I wasn't speaking that you were saying that. I'm just saying when I hear people oh, say, okay, well, yeah. a moderate drinking no. is okay. I, I, I oh. hate that term moderation. I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't believe in it. I'm like, can you do crack in moderation? No. Poison is poison. Yeah. I like Dr. Gregor. He always says, you know, you, what do you want? Moderate diabetes, just amputate a few toes. You know, if it, you know, it's in moderation. It, it's, it's a horrible thing. Yeah. Doesn't make sense.